maybe like 2010 and plus it started getting popular among your regular developers as well right a regular person sitting in india could spin up a server sitting in us and don't have to worry about all the hardware and everything internet started as a concept where every single computer was connected with every single computer if it needed to share some data but soon what we did is we created some centralized places some centralized server to handle large amount of data for websites which are popular right in early 2000s when there was no concept of real cloud computers companies had to manage their own data centers and infrastructure and even if you were a person who wanted to create your own website you would probably need to just keep your computer your local system up and running connected to internet that's how it worked fortunately for us who just started programming in the last decade it has got so much simple with the cloud providers like aws google cloud azure digital ocean and so many other software as a service kind of services as well like Vercel or netlify or heroku these are available right but that was not the case it is the case now and the next step in this evolution i think is what services like cloudflare are doing that is making edge computing very accessible to end developers as well in this video let's just discuss a little bit about these things because i find them really interesting and i hope that you find them interesting as well if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow all right so actually to truly appreciate what edge computing is and how these service providers like Cloudflare and even AWS offers it with CloudFront and services like that or Lambda Edge. Let's understand the traditional model of how a website works. So if you're somebody who's sitting on the earth and this is like my favorite diagram to draw because this just gives you a glimpse of you know the planet and how internet actually connects everyone but if you're sitting somewhere here and let's say you are in early 2000s right and you are trying to access a website which is here probably on the opposite side of the planet what you had to do is you had the dns obviously which gave you the ip address and then this connection right here is a long distance connection right you would probably be rerouted via a bunch of routers before actually getting to that directly so i mean of course there are limitations in terms of the hardware efficiency and stuff but when you consider something as large as earth for example the speed of light also is a consideration in terms of data transfer right so obviously this is not a one-way trip itself because i think speed of light is like seven times the circumference of earth in a second but yeah anyway even if that is not the case still this messaging to and fro has to happen a lot of times why because let's say you are using http protocol or https which is built on top of tcp then tcp is a sin ac sin ac thing protocol right but it, it would not allow you to establish the connection until and unless it knows that both party agree so there is a lot of to and fro going on and especially if you have any sort of moderate website where you would have images and stuff as well so that would also be loading a lot right so this is like a huge length of light that has to travel so this will obviously make your website slow and if you are browsing from here there might be a packet drop and so on plus the fact that you have your local system set up here i'm talking about like the early 2000s connected to the internet this makes it worse because your computer is not powerful enough to handle a lot of clients right so what the modern version of this cloud looks like it looks like as follows so very simply speaking if you have a strong server right here let's say a 120 dollar digital ocean per month digital ocean server setting up here so this would give you a lot of compute power to handle a lot of traffic from outside the world right and because these cloud providers actually bring their own full-fledged data centers you know that they have a lot of good network bandwidth available as well for you to give it could be as high as 1 gbps 2 gbps Yes, depending on what kind of network is established here but this is good because now you have a faster connectivity you have a stronger computer and the best part is you don't have to manage this right you don't have to manage this infrastructure yourself if you wanted to do this in early 2000s or when the cloud wasn't there then you would have to set up your own data center and hardware and everything so this like the introduction of cloud in I, I'm just putting out dates here randomly, but it might be a little before, a little after this, but maybe like 2010 and plus, it started getting popular among your regular developers as well, right? A regular person sitting in India could spin up a server sitting in US and don't have to worry about all the hardware and everything. So this was great, but this still has a problem that if you're doing compute, it is still 
to a specific location, right? It is still restricted to a specific location, which brings in, which still holds these distance problems, right? Because you still have to traverse this whole distance. And the fact that more and more applications became heavier and media rich, it actually just contributed to the fact that this distance mattered a lot more, even though you had a bunch of compute and network capacity, but the results kind of remain the same. Now, the next age of the developer cloud relation is as follows. Let's discuss about edge computing. So let's say we have another world here, which is powered by edge computing, right? Now, what this would do is let's say you are sitting here and you are trying to connect to a website, which is hosted on Cloudflare workers, right? Now, the first important thing in edge computing is you have to realize that your code should usually be stateless, right? Because if it is not stateless, then you would have all sorts of inconsistencies and stuff going wrong. By stateless, what I mean is that your code should not be internally storing any information which is relevant on the next visit, right? So if somebody visits your website again, if they connect to a different server, it should not be something which should matter, right? All right, so let's say you are using the Cloudflare worker, right? Your website is deployed on a Cloudflare worker. Now, what these companies are doing, Cloudflare, AWS huge companies what they are doing is two things the first thing is that they're setting up a lot of data centers around the world and very close to your end users right and these are like a lot of data centers AWS and AWS I think is, is still the leader and Akamai is also an enterprise I think they have mostly B2B things uh, I haven't really seen a lot of B2C players or even developers using it, but they, they are very popular in B2B space. But AWS, Cloudflare, things like these, these are pretty much popular in both the spaces. So what these guys do is they set up their own data centers and then what they do is they connect them all and call it their mini internet, right? So these all these data centers are connected and it's a kind of a mini internet because on this global blockchain, only their servers communicate, right? And we discussed this briefly in the Facebook, why Facebook went down when we discussed about this global, did I just say blockchain? It should be global <laughs> backbone, not blockchain. So this global backbone of infrastructure, which is connected, this is Cloudflare specific. What's the benefit of this? The benefit of this is that they can obviously have their proprietary protocols and things to speed up certain aspects. And plus the network size is small. So routing the traffic is faster. The network speeds are better. They have a smaller data centers and you know, compact network to maintain and so on. But the idea here is, let's say if you're requesting a resource on a worker, it will point you to the closest worker which you have, execute the code and return it right? That's the advantage, the first advantage. The first advantage is it points you to the closest worker with depending on your location in the world. The second important point, which is more relevant for AWS compared to Cloudflare is that let's say you are accessing this Lambda, which sits Lambda edge here, right? Which sits at the edge. Now, if you're trying to access some S3 or some sort of bucket in a different region, which is here, the benefit you can get is you traverse this information on the global network of AWS, right? So you reach to this the S3 bucket through the global AWS network, which means high speed, high network stability and so on. Similarly for, I think for Cloudflare as well, this can pretty much make sense. If you are running this on a worker right here and you are trying to access the Cloudflare R2 storage, which is the new kind of storage, which they have just released, still in beta, but this R2 is like an S3 storage. So if it is also sitting somewhere in, in the different part of world, that would also be traversed on the Cloudflare global backbone network. So the global backbone network is awesome for developers because we get, we don't have to worry a lot about reliability and how everything should be managed. But at the same time, we get a lot of speed and performance benefits. Now, of course, still the simplest setup is in fact, just launch a droplet somewhere in the world and SSH into it. And again, building on top of this, you can have multiple compute instances running all around the world. But the ideal way in order to make your code scalable and a lot cheaper as well in some of the cases is to use some serverless managed function like Lambda or Cloudflare workers, right? These services are just awesome if you can just make use of them because there you don't have to worry about servers, infrastructure and so on. At the same time, you get the benefits of distributed computing at edge. Now, some people also say edge computing as pretty much 
doing computing like iPhone does on your phone itself. So you would have like, you know, ML models and everything running on your phone. But I think this is like a race between two kinds of people. The first kind of people are the ones which bet that clients would get thinner and just enough performance for them to connect to internet at a high speed, but they don't necessarily have to be very high performing in terms of hardware. And the second kind of people who are trying to do computing at the device level itself, mostly in case of machine learning and stuff, they try to figure out, can we make devices more powerful so that it's privacy and this and that and so on. But yeah, I mean, would love to know your thoughts about what do you think about this whole server to cloud to now, a kind of an edge model and do you think that there would be i mean this is kind of like unrelated because you obviously cannot do database operations on phone but this is an interesting model which we might talk about someday but what are, what are your opinions on this model do you use you use server right now are you on the cloud phase are you on the edge phase because this is like still a lot experimental and a lot new i mean workers is is it has been there for a while lambdas has been there for a while but the serverless usage for pretty much everything is now i think improving a lot while developers are becoming aware about how they can use managed services and do a lot of work without actually doing a lot of devops work so yeah that's pretty much it for this video i hope you understood something new learned something new or just discussed something new with me that is all for this video if you liked it make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and comment down below i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code Dump's discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching